and welcome to this introduction to Ripcord. Ripcord is a free MIDI plugin for creating and remixing chord progressions. You can easily improvise full chord progressions with just one finger. Ripcord does not generate any sound on its own, you have to connect it to a plugin instrument of your choice, so we'll begin by walking through how to do that in some widely used DAWs. Please use the video chapters to skip to your DAW or skip straight ahead to the basic concepts. As a heads up, if you want early access to new things that we're working on, you can join our Discord. The invitation link is in the description. Ableton setup requires two tracks. Begin by adding an instrument on one track and then add Ripcord on another. For Ripcord to trigger sounds, you have to set the instrument's track to receive MIDI from Ripcord. First, click on the MIDI From slot and choose Ripcord. Then click on the Post FX slot and choose Ripcord again. Finally, click on Monitor In to monitor the MIDI and you're all set. FL Studio Setup requires two tracks. Begin by adding an instrument on one track. FL does not expose the MIDI routing for its built-in instruments, so this has to be a VST and not an FL instrument. Next, add Ripcord on another track. For Ripcord to trigger sounds, you have to set the instrument to receive MIDI from Ripcord. First, click on the gear button to access the MIDI routing and pick a number for the input port. This can be any number you like, as long as it's not already in use. Then open up the MIDI routing for Ripcord and set the output port to the same number that you chose for the instrument's input port. And you're all set. Reaper setup requires two tracks. Begin by creating a new instrument track. Next, create an instrument track with Ripcord. Now it seems like Ripcord is already triggering sounds, but in fact that is just the instrument track receiving external MIDI events directly, so you have to turn the instrument track off in order to isolate the MIDI that will come from Ripcord. There are two ways to send MIDI from Ripcord to the instrument. You can either open up the instrument's track's routing and set it to receive from Ripcord, or you can open up the routing on Ripcord's track and set it to send to the instrument. Choose whichever method you prefer. Bitwig requires very little effort to set up. Simply drag an instrument onto a track and then drag Ripcord onto that same track, making sure it's on the left side of the instrument. And you're all set.
Studio One requires two tracks. Begin by creating a new instrument track. Next, create an instrument track with ripcord. For ripcord to trigger sounds, you have to set the instrument's track to receive MIDI from ripcord. The default track height in Studio One hides the routing options, so you may have to increase the height of the instrument's track to expose the routing. Then click on the All Input slot and select Ripcord and click the speaker button to monitor the MIDI. And you're all set. Logic Pro requires very little effort to set up. Begin by loading an instrument onto a track. You will find Ripcord inside the MIDI FX slot. Just load it onto the same track as the instrument and you're all set. Ripcord allows you to map multiple output notes to a single input note. When no preset is loaded, the notes will simply pass through. There are two modes, Play and Edit. In Edit mode, you can create a new preset from scratch. The field at the bottom is where you give the preset a name. Then click a note on the input keyboard to assign new output notes to it. Clicking output notes will assign them to the selected input note. The field at the top is where you can give the chord a name, or leave it blank if you like. You can audition the preset as you create it by playing your MIDI keyboard. The save button is directly in the center and will illuminate whenever there are changes available to be saved. You can right click on the input keyboard to copy or paste chords and save time. When you're happy with the preset, switch back to play mode to put it to use. You can also improvise additional notes on top of your preset with the unassigned keys. If you want to create a brand new preset using an existing preset as the starting point, you can click on the gear button and then click Duplicate Current Preset. Make whatever modifications you like Give the new preset a different name and save the result. You can select the next or previous preset in your collection by clicking on the arrows or by pressing the arrow keys on your computer keyboard. Ripcord allows you to trigger more than one chord at a time, so you can play legato style chords or even overlapping chords. When chords have notes that overlap, the UI will show those notes in a darker shade of blue. The power button allows you to keep a preset loaded but turn the chords off if you like. If you were to use the power button within Ableton, for example, it would cut off the MIDI routing so you would no longer be able to trigger any notes. The power button on Ripcord allows you to turn off the chords but maintain the MIDI routing so you can still trigger single notes either from a MIDI keyboard or by clicking on the input keyboard. You can view your preset collection by clicking on the presets button. Currently, the collection is empty. To import presets, click on the gear button, click on import a preset file, and then navigate to the location of the preset files you would like to import. Ripcord ships with a collection of basic chords that are located in the presets folder of the download. Click on the topmost preset and then hold down the shift key and click on the bottommost preset in order to select them all at once. 
and then click Open to complete the process. The presets view has now been populated. You can type in the search bar to find matching presets Click on the stars to favorite presets and click on the favorites button to view only your favorites. To delete a preset, click on the trash can and then click on delete or cancel to back out. To load a preset, simply click on the preset name. Finally, if you want to share a preset, you can export it by clicking on the gear button and then clicking export current preset. Ripcord is also capable of importing MIDI files that contain chords. As an example, let's head over to Splice and download something. First, navigate to Sounds, then MIDI, and then Packs with MIDI progressions. From there, you can select a pack and download a MIDI file. Back in Ripcord, click on the gear button, then on Import a MIDI file, and then navigate to the file that you downloaded. You may want to clean up the preset file that was generated by giving it a different name. You can also use the chord modifiers to shift all of the chords to white keys, shuffle them left or right, or shift all of them to black keys. Now you can improvise with the chords that were automatically extracted from the MIDI file. Ripcord allows you to transpose the chords within a preset up or down one full octave. To enable transposition, click on the button directly in the center. This will take the bottom two octaves of the keyboard out of play for regular use, with the red key marking the midpoint. Now you can click on those notes or play them with your MIDI keyboard to transpose the chords in a preset. If your MIDI keyboard is not a full 88 keys, you can use the left and right arrows to relocate the transpose keys on the keyboard. The transpose keys work in latch mode, so you don't need to keep them pressed down. Normally, when you play a chord with ripcord, all of the notes will hit at the exact same moment. If you want to disperse the timing of the notes, you can turn up the strum knob. You can also reverse the strum or set it to alternate. Let's record the MIDI for a visual representation of the effect. Now we can see that the timing of the notes has fanned out, but the velocity of each note is still perfectly even. To introduce a similar dispersion in velocity, turn up the velocity strum knob. Now we can see that both the timing and velocity have a strumming effect applied. 
Finally, if you want to introduce some note dispersion, but you don't want the dispersion to be perfectly symmetrical, there are randomization knobs for both timing and velocity. Now we can see that the randomization has been applied, which can sometimes help a performance sound more natural. If you record the track that you have Ripcord inserted on, you will only be recording the input notes. In some DAWs, such as Ableton, it's extremely easy to record the full output notes of the chord by simply recording the track that is receiving MIDI from Ripcord. In other DAWs, such as FL Studio or Logic, it's much more complicated to record the output notes. We wanted to normalize the recording process so that no matter what DAW you are using, you can always easily record the full output notes from Ripcord. To accomplish that, we built a MIDI recorder into Ripcord itself. To use the MIDI recorder, click the Record button all the way on the left. Once Record is enabled, Ripcord will begin recording MIDI the moment that the first input note is received. The MIDI recorder is completely decoupled from the DAW transport, so you don't actually need to press play or record in your DAW to use it. You'll know that MIDI is being recorded when the record button fully illuminates and the MIDI target button all the way on the right activates. The MIDI recorder will continue listening for input notes until you click the record button a second time to disable it. Once you stop recording, you will see that the MIDI target button has fully illuminated, indicating that you can now drag the MIDI into your DAW. Now we can see that the full output notes of the chords have been captured, and this process works exactly the same in every DAW. You can also use the MIDI recorder while the rest of your song is playing back. To do so, you should enable the MIDI recorder first, then press play in your DAW, and then begin playing Ripcord when you're ready. Now you've recorded MIDI that is in time with the rest of your song, potentially anyway. Finally, to reset the MIDI target button, just double click on the record button. We hope you'll get a lot of use out of Ripcord and have fun improvising. We also want to remind you that we're working on many other cool things, and if you want to access them before anyone else, all you have to do is click the link in the description to join our Discord server. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.